you'll be seeing my September makes video. Alright, without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. My first two makes are my absolute favorite makes for this month and for probably the last three months in general. It's this grey turtleneck from the Megan Nielsen Rowan pattern and a burgundy Leonora skirt from Seamwork magazine. For both of them I wasn't sure if they even were my style and if I would even enjoy to wear them. However, I found these outfits on Instagram and there were a lot of people wearing grey turtlenecks with either brown or burgundy red skirts, um, simple mini A-line skirts and I totally love that. So I kind of had to make an outfit like that. I've been having laying around in my stash the red um, fake leather fabric as well as the seamwork Leonora pattern uh, for some time now and I really wanted to use both of them. So this was the perfect opportunity and I'm so happy I tried myself on this garment. I made some alterations to the Leonora pattern though. So I simply took the pattern and um, brought out the side seams by I think 5 cm which are 2 inches. And yeah, I did that on each side. Fit wise I had to change the waist area as well. I left the belt loops till the end and then put them where they looked best. Um, I only have one problem with this skirt, which are the way the buttons are touched. I got proper jeans buttons from an online shop and when they arrived I saw that they were very tall. So every time um, you pull the fabric, this happens. The buttons change to their side because there's so much room. So because the buttonholes are vertical, I have the problem that the buttons can go easily out of them and then um, yeah, the skirt pops open. Which is a bit annoying because you want your buttons to secure your skirt, don't you? The other problem which I have at the moment which doesn't make this issue better is that I started the skirt and fitted it before I went into my vacation. However, in Italy I ate a lot, so I definitely weigh a kilo or two or maybe even three more than I did before the vacation. So um, the fit of this skirt didn't get better. So since I plan to lose that weight anyway, um, I hope that after I did that, it will fit a lot better and that I won't have um, the issues with the um, buttons popping open. Um, however, if I still should have them, I already came up with two solutions. So the first idea would be to put some um, snaps or poppers um, down here and um, those ones that you can um, sew on, so I can sew them on from the inside so that they're not visible from the outside and just as something to secure um, the placket um, between the two buttons so that um, not all of the pull is um, on the buttons. The other idea would be to put in a zipper um, here from that part downwards um, and to sew it on with a as much as possible invisible stitch and um, somewhere here where the placket is then I can put the skirt on, pull the zip up and um, have it closed and then put on the buttons and they're just decoration. Um, if you have any other ideas um, please comment and let me know. I can't be the only one with the problem. Now to the title next sweater. This is another one of my beloved Megan Nielsen Rowan makes. Um, as I probably have mentioned before, I'm totally in love with this pattern because the fit is great and it gives you a lot of options. Um, it has probably every neckline option um, you can imagine. Um, it comes as um, t-shirt length or as um, bodysuit option and it has uh, three sleeve lengths. 
I'm really in love with how it came out. Although I had to alter it a little bit at the neck part because my fabric doesn't have the 30% stretch that the pattern recommends. So um, it didn't go over my head. I tried it with a small portion of the fabric before I cut the neck band. So yeah, um, that's why I know. So I simply cut a bit of neck band and adjusted it styling wise. I think this turtleneck is really great because you can't just wear it on its own, which is obviously great because it looks nice, but you can also layer it under other garments which are probably thinner and not weather appropriate at the moment so you can make any outfit warmer by just throwing this turtleneck on underneath and then wearing over it whatever you like. So that's another thing I love about this um, turtleneck and that's one of the reasons why I made it too because I thought if I won't like it at all I can at least throw it on with a sweater over it and a scarf so that you don't see the turtleneck and it will look like the outfit without the turtleneck but it will keep me a lot warmer. And so far it's been a really great saver for all of these really cold days because it makes any outfit just so much warmer by simply putting it on underneath. Alright, now onto the part of my makes which didn't go so well. So I have this month um, actually to show you two things which are kind of fails. The first one is a pussy bow blouse which I made from a lovely fabric I got from Sew Over It. Um, I got the package with that fabric um, just the day after I recorded my latest fabric haul and sewing plans video so I didn't include it in that but it was basically a plan to make um, from the day on I um, purchased this fabric. I made a pussy bow blouse pattern, not the one from Sew so Over It, but one I got as a free pattern from a magazine. The fit of this pattern with the ties around the neck isn't that great. And my other problem is that I made the sleeves smaller because I thought that they were too wide, they were, they were really wide. And I just made them a little bit too small which now leads to pulling around my arms anywhere from um, my elbow just over my elbow and down since this um, crinkle crepe from so over it is so thin and does fray really easily um, it can't cope with much of um, stretch so after one day of wearing there were already holes near the seams um, on the arms. So let me show you. I'm talking about this. I guess you can see. Yeah. So the fabric is just too thin and too filigrain to um, keep in place while stretching and it frays really easily. So yeah. I got holes everywhere there. Um, if you cut a blouse in a looser shape, um, this won't be a problem, but um, if you purchase a crim crinkle crepe from Sew so Over It, um, which they have a lot of in stock now, um, they're all labeled crinkle crepe, um, if you get one of these just make sure that you use it for a make that is really flowy and that doesn't have parts pulling, because if you don't stabilize the hems or yeah, just sew it up normally, um, it will tear. However, I still love the fabric and I love how soft it is and how great it feels on your skin and don't get me wrong, um, besides um, the fabric being filigrane, it is absolutely perfect and I love it and it has um, the quality um, we're used to get from Sew so Over It. So it would be really a pity to me to throw this away. So what I have planned to save this make is to wait until spring or summer when you can wear short sleeve things and then simply cut the sleeves shorter. To cut them either to a t-shirt length because until here everything is fine or to cut them to a cap sleeve length and then I think I um, could totally wear this and it uh, doesn't have pulling anywhere and um, yeah I will probably also make this 
tie here a little smaller so that it isn't so warm in the summer and um, that it's just a little more like this over in pattern which has um, quite small ties as well so yeah I think I like that look more so for the next possible blouse I'm making I'll definitely don't use the same pattern again I'll just get the so over it one because that seems to be really great and yeah until then um, this blouse will stay in my wardrobe and um, I'll see in the summer uh, when I can actually wear what I will be doing with it then how I'm gonna save this fail because I don't want it to be a fail this fabric is so great I really want to wear this so I, I have to make something out of it out of it which is wearable. That was the um, more successful makes of my fails if I can say that this way. The other thing I have to show you about which I am not sure as well if I like it um, is this turtleneck sweater. The cold was what draw me to um, so this pattern and actually to get the whole magazine um, because I really liked that pattern and how it looked on the two models because they had two or no even three versions of this sewn up in the magazine and they all looked great but I couldn't figure out a way for me to make this cool work um, because at first I cut it out as it was presented in the magazine with a huge coal and um, it was simply too huge for me when you don't drape it carefully over your shoulders it just hangs down in the front very loosely and it came down to about my belly button and that simply looked weird what i then tried was to make the curl smaller at least at the top of it however i still have a problem with how it's attached to the rest of the jumper this attempt on saving this fail also failed so the only idea left for me is now to take the cold off completely and just have it as a loose sweater with a really wide neck. You might wonder now why I am not just um, leaving out these fails um, completely in my videos because I haven't told you in any plans videos that I'm going to make them. Nobody would notice it. However, I think it's an important part to show the fails to on camera. I've had some people now comment under my videos saying, oh, that looks so great, I love that, you're so talented, I could never do that. And I'm always like, have you tried? Did you, like, did you get great instructions? With great instructions, I think everybody is able to make nice garments. And usually those people then answer, yes, I did, um, I tried this and this project, but I failed and then I decided this hobby is nothing for me because I can't obviously do it and I let go and I think that's really sad because we all have fails we all don't always get amazing results when I started sewing I had so many fails now it's gotten a lot better and I'm probably a lot better able to save my makes to just don't let any fails get me down, but that doesn't mean that I don't have them. So I wanted to show you them to encourage you to not let go of sewing just because you failed once or you failed with two garments if you fail on something. You just have to figure out why it went wrong and where you made the mistake and then just don't do this mistake again. Sounds easier in theory than it might be in practice, I know. But that's the way you can even draw something positive from mistakes and learn from them. Because if you have made a mistake once and you know what the mistake was, you're unlikely to repeat it. So please don't take your fails as proof for you're not being talented or able to learn something. It is just a part of the process and you have to go through that. We all, even the best of us, make mistakes. So please don't let that get you down or let that quit you something you would love to try and you would love to get better in. So please don't let 
those things stop you from sewing and getting better at sewing and trying more complex things because it's a really great hobby and I think it would be really sad if you couldn't do it or wouldn't get better in it just because you're afraid of failing. It's only just fabric and yes probably some money you invested into this project and time of course but it won't break your world it's just it's just a piece of fabric that you have practiced on in the end let that be enough about failing and sewing i still have two things to show you which are knitted makes um i made two other scarves because um, i need more scarves now it's getting wintry and um, the first one is one i made really early this year i think i finished it a few months ago but I just forget um, to show you. It's a scarf knitted in a simple um, stitch, which I forgot the name of, but I will link you a video if you're interested um, in how to make this. I will link you a video on how to do this stitch um, because that was really great and I was able to learn that really quickly. Um, yeah, it's a loop scarf so it's closed and it goes around my head three to four times so depending on how tight i want it to be so yeah if you just drop it around three times you have to wear it a little bit looser i used 200 grams of yarn which i think is the perfect amount for scarf at least for me because it's not too bulky um but not too thin as well and I used a color that has the same color or kind of similar color to most of my bottoms I wear, which are jeans. So it's great because it fits to all my jeans. So um, I like to match my scarves with either my bottom or my shoes, because whenever I wear shoes, I usually wear a scarf too in the winter. So I can repeat that color and make my outfit look more put together like this. And the second scarf I made is this beige one and it's made with a moss stitch. Um, it's actually not a mid knit make, it's a crochet, um, I just realized. Yeah. And it's made from uh, three different um, balls of yarn, which I got from a um, giant ball of yarn or either it had more a, a cake form. And um, it was um, dyed ombre, so going from a light beige to a darker beige, and I made three different balls out of that, and then crocheted them in one strand so that it gets thicker and has more volume and is not as thin as a scarf just out of a, a tiny um, strand of wool, because I find that um, those tinier yarns take so much time to knit or crochet into things and um, with thicker ones you're just so much quicker and yeah I, I really enjoy making things out of um, thicker yarns because it doesn't take much time and it fits better to my style and yeah so this one is not a loop scarf to ends and um, I'm not sure if I like this as much as the other one um, but yeah I like to wear it anyway and it's great it keeps me warm um, the wool is 100% cotton so yeah it's it's really great to wear in the winter as well um, because it's a natural fiber and um, it's really soft and it feels great so those were my six additions to my wardrobe or for now probably actually just four of them however um, this was quite a productive month for me keeping in mind that i just had two weeks of a month to sew so yeah i'm really happy with what i got, got done i hope this video was entertaining for you um, thanks a lot for watching and i guess i'll see you soon with another video as always if you liked this video please like and um, if you aren't subscribed yet you do me a great favor by subscribing if you want to receive more videos from, from me. So thank you very much for watching and bye! See you soon!